Rockin' Fan, it's your boy Ricundo coming back at you with another video. So today we're gonna talk about yes, we're gonna talk about the quarterback position for our Atlanta Falcons. So before we do that, you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. Please hit the notification bell so you know when I drop another video. Please hit the share button and share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So, we went, like I said, guys, we're talking about the much weighted talk about our quarterback position, which, in my opinion, I don't know how everybody else feels, it's probably the biggest decision that this team um, probably will need to make. And it kind of gives everybody. Um, the direction this team could be going in um, in the immediate future and in the long-term future. So everybody knows Matt Ryan has a $48 million cap hit on the roster this year. Um, that's the biggest of any quarterback in the lead, $48 million. The reason he has that because he had restructured his contract three different times to get other players signed. So now the Atlanta Falcons is stuck with the $48 million. Well, they're really not stuck. Um, they could do on, um, different things. I'm going to go over a couple of those things now. Um, they could, which maybe what I'm thinking they probably going to do. I'm not 100% sure on this. They can extend Matt Ryan um, to get that cap number down. They extend him, um, maybe a two-year deal, put out some void years on the contract to kind of help lower the, lower the cap. They could do that. Um, that's the the thing the way I think these guys are going to be going. I think they're going to be going into the route where they're going to actually um, probably extend Matt Ryan. Or they could actually just go ahead and let, let him ride with that $48 million cap which is I think like 23% of the salary at Atlanta Falcons salary and try to figure out um, another, other ways to to get um, salary cap room to bring in some free agents, sign our draft class and things like that. Right now we got about $13 million um, in cap space. Um, listen to Terry Fontenot, um, you, you can't spend all that on free agency and draft class. You need to keep some of that, that money um, throughout the season so probably more like 10 million in cap space so definitely they will have to restructure some other contracts or extend some other players on the team to actually be able to sign the, the draft class bring in some free agents um, and try to build this roster to be competitive this season so um, so that's one other thing they could do right go ahead and ride with Matt Ryan contract or they can do an extension which that's the route I'm taking I think they're going to do an extension um, I think that they believe that Matt Ryan can probably be a viable quarterback for this team for two more years. Um, you guys know my opinion on that. I think that we build around Matt Ryan, um, build his team up. So when a young quarterback takes over the team, um, he'll be set up for success. Uh, I don't think a quarterback can come in and be a savior of a team when the team has so many holes like the Atlanta Falcons. And um, we have a, went over all those holes um, throughout when I was talking about every position that we talked about. Talked about we only got two running backs on the roster. We only got um, two receivers on the roster. We only got three tight ends. Only one um, Pro Bowl tight end. The rest are journeymen and blocking tight ends. Um, Arthur Smith runs a lot of 12, 13 personnel. So if, if it's just a lot of holes on offense alone. And then we don't even talk about the defense. We talked about that. So um, I don't think the quarterback is the, the biggest issue for us. Yes, we eventually we're going to have to go ahead and, you know, do away and move on from Matt Ryan. But I don't think this is the time to do that. We need to make sure that we build around the team and then bring the young quarterback in. So, that's the way I'm thinking, all right? And then I just go over the last decision these guys can make. They can actually cut Matt Ryan or trade him before June 1 
Um, and if they do that, it'll be a $40 million dead cap. So um, basically, in essence, what we're saying, we're going to cut a quarterback or trade him and pay him not to play for the team $40 million. Um, I don't think they would do that, but they could do it. Um, we just seen what um, the Philadelphia Eagles did with um, Carson Wentz a few seasons ago, a couple seasons ago. So it's not out the question for them to do that. So that could happen as well. And then the last thing they could wait till after June first, which is post June one, it'd be a twenty four million dollar cap hit, um, dead cap, and basically you're paying Matt Ryan for twenty four dollars, twenty four million dollars. Sorry about that. But the issue with that is, um, I never see him cutting cutting Matt Ryan. That that would be ridiculous to cut him. Um, if, if you're going to get rid of him, you hope you trade him. But if you're going to trade him, I don't see any team waiting to June first to actually trade for Matt Ryan. So um, I don't think that's going to happen. So like I said, I'm guys, I'm going with option where they do some kind of extension, some kind of agreement, bring me two years. They can do some war years on the back end, put a lot of signing bonus in there. You know, maybe Matt Ryan decided to give him a, a team-friendly deal because he's been here so long to try to build a roster up. So we'll just have to see what happened with that. Hopefully, um, they can work something out. But definitely, we need to be able to get some kind of um, information about what they're going to do with that quarterback position. Um, and they have until um, – the league, New Year league, league year, which is, I think it's like March 13th, something like that. So um, then we'll figure out what they're going to do about Matt Ryan. So currently right now, we got two quarterbacks on the roster. We got Matt Ryan and we got Felipe Franks. All right, we know where Matt Ryan is. He's been in the league for 14 years. Um, how everybody ever feel about Matt Ryan? He's the best quarterback in Atlanta Falcon history. Um, he had all of the numbers. He's been a model consistency, only missed three games in his career. And like I said, I still think he can play a good enough level to get this team to be competitive uh, moving forward. So that's what I think about Matt Ryan. Felipe Franks, um, we really don't know what we have in Felipe Franks. Um, the little what we have seen, um, he was very, very raw as a talent. Um, to the point um, they started putting him in special teams put him in tight end, all kind of positions, doing kind of a lot of quirky stuff with Felipe Franks. So we don't really know what Felipe Frank is as a quarterback. We know he do have some, some mobility um, to move around. I think that kind of excited a lot of um, fans during the preseason, what we've seen from that. And some people even feel like he was going to be um, second on the depth chart anyway because of the quarterback that we had was not playing well. So. So those are two quarterbacks we have on the draft. So it will be interesting to see, like I said before, what the Falcons do in free agency. They decide to bring in a quarterback in free agency to actually a veteran quarterback to, to come in, actually back up Matt Ryan, or were they going to roll with free play Franks, let him be the backup. But today while we're here, and just like all the other videos, we're going to talk about the draft class, the quarterback draft class, and – if these guys decide to take a quarterback in a draft, um, who are some of those guys they probably could, can look at and, and kind of figure out who's going to um, be the heir apparent to Matty Ice. So that's where we're going today to talk about um, some of the draft prospects that we have from, um, from the draft. A couple of guys that, that are in the senior bowl. Um, um, so they, we're actually going to get to see them play the um, the game this weekend to see how – sometime this week. I don't know if it's weekend or sometime this week. But um, we're going to actually get to see these guys play and see, what, you know, they put some film out there. And of course, the Atlanta Falcons um, are down at the, the senior bowl this week. The general manager and his coaching staff down there is trying to – Take a look at all these guys. Um, it have been some standout guys. Um, Johnson from Florida State has been standing out. Um, we have seen some some actually good players on the quarterbacks as well. But 
So let's just get in and talk about some of these quarterbacks. So the first quarterback um, we're going to talk about, and I'm not going to really talk about the big board per se because um, each quarterback, each where I was looking, they had um, some of these quarterbacks different according to where they had them at on their boards and things like that. Um, but one consistent was that Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh was number one. Um, this guy, he's he's an older quarterback, kind of like Joe Burrow was when he came out of um, LSU. And, you know, he came from Ohio State when LSU, um, older quarterback. So Joe, this Kenny Pickett be about 24 when he get drafted. Um, and he's right now the number one quarterback in this draft. However, this draft class of quarterback is not as highly – touted as some of the other draft classes quarterbacks. So, in my opinion, personally, um, none of these quarterbacks is worth their top 10 pick. So, um, of course, Falcons picking at number 8. So, if they were to pick a quarterback at number 8, I would be surprised um, by, about picking a quarterback at number 8. So, so let's talk about some. So, Kenny Pickett, like I said, um, he can make every throw in the NFL. Right. His accuracy has a little question to it. Um, he's sneaky, athletic, you know, so could be somebody that you know these guys could take later on. You know, maybe if they want to, if, if he was to slide to the second round, maybe they can take one of those second round picks and pick up Kenny Pickett. But I'm not taking a quarterback in the first round. Like I said, guys, I think that would be a wasted pick. At this point, um, one reason, um, like I said, quarterback will not fix this team at this point, um, especially not a young, young quarterback. And then, again, none of these guys should be in the top 10 of a pick for quarterback. And I don't care how much combine, how much things they do, these guys are not. None of these guys should be number one, uh, top 10 quarterback. All right, so that's Kenny Pickett. Next, we're going to talk about Desmond Ritter. He's also at the senior bowl along with Kenny Pickett. Um, he's fast, very fast, and he navigates the pocket well. Uh, he can be a little erratic with his throws. Um, of course, he got he got injured in the um, college football playoffs. So I hope, um, obviously, he's better because he's at the senior bowl. Um, but Desmond Ritter was one of those quarterbacks they were talking about coming out. Um, a lot of these guys need a little work. And these are the kind of guys that I think that if you was to pick, um, they could sit behind a quarterback for a year or two to learn the game, get get an understanding of NFL football before you would put these guys out there. So that's Desmond Ritter. The next one would be Sam Howell, who's actually been tied for since his freshman year. Um, he's an NFL prototype quarterback. He's a little small, but he has a strong arm. And um, before um, this year's performance, a lot of guys was picking him to be the number one quarterback coming out this season. Of course, he had a little down year, but um, he's able to throw his wide receivers open. He, like I said, he got a got a strong arm. Um, and he has potential. So if the Falcons were to take somebody like Sam Howell, not in the first round, once again, but if they were to take somebody like Sam Howell, I'll be ready for him to learn from Matty Ice. And then when it's time for Matty Ice to, to ride, off, ride off into the sunset, um, Sam Howell could take over his spot. All right, let's get into what everybody probably want to see here in Atlanta is Malik Willis from Liberty. Um, he's very athletic. Um, he he This year, his team, he actually had to carry his team this year. The team wasn't that good, but he did almost everything. Um, he he has all the traits to be um, one of today's prototypical quarterbacks in the league. He, he has... Um, like I said, the, the, the escapability to get out of pocket. He can make all the throws. He got a strong arm. Um, sometimes he had a problem reading, reading coverage. Um, that's why I said he needs to sit behind a veteran quarterback as well. 
So no, he he would not be my number eight pick overall. But I could see the line of fact taking this guy. Um, he's he he would be a hometown kid, and he would fit the demographics of the city of Atlanta. Uh, I think a lot of people know what I mean by that. Um, Seems like everybody still missing Michael Vick, um, even though. The best quarterback in franchise history, been here for 14 years, and he still somehow does not get all the respect that he deserves. So, but um, Malik, Malik Malik Willis is an interesting, um, actually, um, prospect, and his stock is kind of rising because it's some of the things he's doing in today's, um, this week's um, senior senior bowl practices. Have, have shown up his athleticism that he has, the way he throw the ball. Like I said, his capability, um, all of these things showing up. I did see um, a great interview from Malik Willis talking about um, he got some of his anticipation from Matt Ryan. So it kind of it, it'd be good for him to sit behind a quarterback that he that he admires. Well, like I said, guys, it would not be a quarterback I take, and the. Um, in the first round so if they would want to take him in the second round not that first second round pick maybe that third second round pick I mean the second second round pick or maybe we can get a pick um, some extra picks because one of our receivers do not want to play with us anymore which that would uh, which actually really hurt us more because we only have one receiver on the, um, the roster at, at that point so we have to consider all those bases um, next quarterback I'm talking about is Carson Strong from Nevada. Um, and basically, guys, they're saying that he's actually the best thrower in this draft. He throw the ball down the field with ease. He can make throws 50 yards on out routes. Um, this guy has some has a cannon for an arm. Um, and like I said, guys, they're saying that this guy is one of the um, – He's the best story in the NFL this year. I haven't heard a lot about Carson Strong, so I would actually have to go back and look at some of his film to see personally um, his attributes. And he could be um, the Josh Wilson of this of this class. He could be sneaking up the, the draft board. Remember, the draft is in April, so it's just February. So all these guys is going to move up. Because everybody knows people love quarterbacks. So some of these, right now, these guys are not looking like they're going to be a top 10 pick. But by April, one of these guys, some team going to convince themselves to to go ahead and pick one of these guys in the top 10. I'm just hoping it's not the Atlanta Falcons. All right. And then the last guy we're going to talk about is Matt Carrell. Um, he has... The, the the best platform off platform throws sort of like the what the Patrick Mahomes does the the stuff that Aaron Rodgers do not comparing him to any of those guys um, sort of like what Josh Josh Wilson was doing last year um, that kind of enamored everybody being able to throw the ball moving throwing it across his body sort of what Justin Fields did in his pro day things like that um, he shows all those attributes. Um, some people think that the, he had the success he had because he was in Lane Kiffin's offense, um, but he he was able to to succeed in that offense, and he's very athletic. So um, I can definitely see um, Matt Carell being selected by somebody. Um, somebody and any and be honest, guys. One of these, a lot of these guys probably will get drafted in the first round. I just don't think any of these guys are in the top 10. Um, but somebody, like I said, some team is going to convince themselves that one of these quarterbacks can be their quarterback of the future. Uh, and I'm not saying any of these guys can't be the quarterback of the future. I'm just saying they can't come in and be a day one starter for my team, which is the Atlanta Falcons. So um, I can't speak for other teams and their scouts and their coaching staff and what they what they think, but personally, um, I would not like to um, take a quarterback at number eight. So, guys, those are the draft picks. Some of those guys um, that 
that could be potential um, picks for the Atlanta Falcons sometime in the draft. Um, so you guys let me know which one you think. Um, if be honest with you, um, just because of the the the, the storyline and how it probably would give the Atlanta Falcons some kind of um, the fan base some kind of joke, which and it also uh, have them wanting him to get on the field like right away. Um, it's drafting Malik Willis. If we can get Malik Willis like in the third round or something like that, that'd be awesome. Um, Cause like I said, I think he he has potential to be dynamic, but he's not ready to be a starter right now. So being able to sit behind somebody like Matt Ryan, and yes, that's after getting him the two-year extension, because like I said, you get him the two-year extension, um, you front-load it with, with, with bonuses and salary and um, guaranteed money up front. The last year, it'll be voided out years, and maybe we could kind of figure something out. And then once Matt Ryan's out, you can have Malik Willis who sat behind him for those two years, and there you go. You got your quarterback for the next 10 to 15 years. That's what we're hoping. We want to be in the Green Bay Packers situation where Brett Favre was there, Aaron Rodgers sit for like three years, Brett Favre leaves, Aaron Rodgers take over, and another 15 to 16 years of having the quarterback not be the problem with your team. That's what we want. So um, hopefully we can kind of figure it out. Um, we still don't know about Felipe Franks, see what, what he's going to do. Um, so we just have to have to um, put that in perspective about Felipe Franks. Maybe he is the heir apparent to Matt Ryan. We just don't know. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about, um, is, uh, and I waited to the end to talk about this because um, I really don't know what to, what to think about. Um, the situation and this is the situation with Brian Flores um, taking a lawsuit on NFL, the Denver Broncos, Miami Dolphins, and the New York Giants. And you know, my thoughts on it is that um, I think when um, somebody is willing to put themselves out there, risk it all, it is something there. Um, we don't know what's there. Um, but like I always said, where there's smoke, is probably some fire there somewhere. So um, the lead at least has to do an investigation on these things to see um, what's there. Um, I think the NFL was real quick to say there was no merit there. Um, we we have to acknowledge that the, all three teams that came out and said there are no merits there. So we would just have to wait to let the process happen, um, play out. Um, my personal opinion, um, it's something there. Um, I wouldn't think that this coach would would actually um, put himself out there if he didn't have what he believe, um, what he thinks is what happened of, of the, the the situations that he described in his lawsuit. So um, we would just have to see. We do know for a fact that. Um, what Bill Belichick thought about um, the giant job situation because we see it in the text. And what Bill Belichick thought was that they was planning on hiring the coach they actually hired before the guy even did a video. I mean, they even did an interview. So um, that's a fact. We do know that because we've seen the text matches. Now, what he got his information from, did he get it from the Giants? Did he get it from word of mouth? Did he get it from hearsay? Whatever the, he, ever he got it from, um, he thought that Brian DeBow was actually going to get the job for the New York Giants. That day, he texted Brian, Brian Flores, and Brian Flores hadn't even interviewed for the job yet. So, just take that. That what you what you think about it and all that. So pretty much that's all I got to say about the situation. I think we just have to wait and see when everything comes out and bring it to light and we'll just have to see. Um it's obvious that the numbers about the coaches um diversity in the lead 
is what they are. Can't deny that. Um, I think there are some brilliant um, coaches in the league that deserve, deserve the opportunity to be coaches. But I think these coaches deserve the opportunity to to see what they actually, actually can do. A lot of the coaches that has been hired of minority nature does not get a lot of time to see what they can do. Um, you think about some of the coaches that coached for one year and got um, – think about the, uh, Van Joseph from um, the Cardinals. Think about um, – Dave McCullough, just 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 year from the Houston Texans, you can't you cannot possibly believe that one year is going to determine when a new coach, first time coach, is coming in trying to build his his chemistry with his team, trying to build um, some kind of system, and after the first year, you think that he should have turned the whole team around. So I think that's not genuine. I think that's something that needs to be looked at. And I think that they should be able have to honor at least honor the contracts on both sides. So if you hire a coach for three years, maybe they, they lessen the number of years. Don't hire him for five years. Don't hire him for four years. If you hire a coach for three years, you should be a, you should be should be contractual to let that coach be there for three years. I know they still get paid when you cut them and all that stuff, but. Um, what you're doing is you're not letting the, letting the guy um, figure it out. Like I said, when you when you're trying to build a team, um, you need you need time. And right now, some of these owners don't give these guys time, especially the um, minority coaches that that get get jobs. They don't have a lot of time. That's why I was so impressed with Arthur Smith did this year. Uh, especially with this roster that we had, especially with the salary cap situation that we had, um, I thought that he actually did a great job his first season. So, but the the, the clock will start on Arthur Smith this year. Him and Terry Fontenot. Um, so they got to be able to show some improvement. We won seven games this year. We got to be able to win more than that. So. So, guys, that's all I got. You guys let me know what you think about the quarterback situation. Like I said, it's one of the most important decisions that the Atlanta Falcons probably need to make this year, what they're going to do about that $48 million um, cap hit or Matt Ryan's and what the direction of their going to team. I think that decision can give a lot of us some kind of um, guide of where they're, where, where they're thinking what kind of direction they want to go with the team. So um, we do know that their plan was to try to win and, and build at the same time. That's what Arthur Smith said last year. That what Terry Fontenot spoke about last year. But we got to see improvement. So with that being said, Matty Ice is going to retire a Falcon. He <laughs> hear from me. And this your boy Ricundo coming back at you with another video. Peace.